Welcome to the online lectures for information security. In today's class, we'll be studying about attacks. Now, first, we'll study the definition for attack. What is an attack? An attack is a deliberate act that exploits a vulnerability. Now, what is a vulnerability? A vulnerability is a weakness. Now, if suppose there is a particular application, now in here, a, the per, an application might have certain weaknesses that a developer while developing the program, whether he has missed or whether it is left for some valid reasons. So if an attacker or a hacker get access to this weakness, what he's going to do is he's going to exploit that vulnerability. That is, he's going to try and access the system by making use of this weakness. That is the definition of attack. Now, an attack, it is accomplished by a threat agent. Now, what is a threat agent? A threat agent, it can be a third person, any other person. You're hiring a person to launch an attack on an organization. Or it is used to damage or steal an organization's information. That is, the database or whatever information is stored within the particular organization, you're either going to delete that information or you're going to steal that information, steal or copy the information. And now this information is basically an asset. What is an asset? Asset is anything that provides you value when you use it properly. So this is the definition of attack. Now, coming on to the different types of attacks that can be launched on different control systems. The first one is malicious code. Now, within malicious code, this kind of attack, it includes the execution of virus. Now, if you remember within the threats and software attacks, you have studied viruses worms, Trojan horse, and web scripts. Now in here, within the malicious code, what you're going to, in here, the attack can be formed by making use of virus, worms, or Trojan horses. Now, this types of attack are used so that you can destroy or steal the information. Now, if you remember, virus normally attach itself to spreadsheets or word files, and it cannot replicate on its own. You need to execute the file, then only the virus is going to replicate itself. That is, it is going to spread within the system. Whereas worms, they can self-replicate themselves and fill in the memory. Whereas Trojan horses, they are going to disguise themselves into something else. That as example was readme files. The readme files that we have studied, that is, it is going to disguise you as a helpful program, or this is going to disguise itself as something useful. Now, whenever you open or download any application, if you get a message that is you that is that might provide you with some insight on the application, it, if it reads that readme, you're going to open it. Now, this readme files can also be containing any of the malicious code. The next one is the state of art malicious attack is polymorphic or multivector. Now, polyvector, sorry, polyformic, polymorphic means we have studied that, but then in here, this type of attack, they follow polymorphism. Now, what is polymorphism? In polymorphism, the virus or the worms that are there within your system, they are going to change their shape, size, and characteristics so that the antivirus cannot identify this particular virus within your system. And multivector. Now, multivector attack. These are they combine a range of threats at multiple stages. That is, in here we have, I've, we've, I've told you that a particular application might have certain weaknesses. Now, in here, if suppose for a for a certain application you identify more than one weakness. So what you're going to do is you're going to attack at all weak points. That is called as your multivector attack. So you can. You are using polymorphic and multivector so that you can insert malicious code. Now, in here, when you are going to use multivector, the chances of success are high. The chances of success are high. Now, why the chances of success are high? Because if suppose the organization is able to stop one part of this uh, one attack at one weakness, you're going to initiate an attack at the another point. So it becomes difficult for you to counterattack all the different places. So that is malicious code. Now in here, there's a table that is going to tell you the attack replication vectors. These are the different types of attacks that we'll be studying. IP scan attack, web browsing, virus, shares, mass mail, and SNMP. Simple network management protocol. Now let's study each of them in detail. 
the first attack is the IP scan and attack. Now in here, what the hacker is going to do is here, but then the hacker is going to scan random and the local ranges of IP address. That is the different IP addresses that are traveling through a particular network. He's going to see all the IP addresses that are using some particular network. Now in here, he's going to select some random IP addresses and he's going to initiate an attack. Now this before initiating the attack, he's going to identify the weaknesses of the particular program. Now when you know the certain weaknesses of a particular program, it becomes easy for you to launch an attack. That is why you're going to go for the vulnerabilities. Now in here, you're either going to find out the different vulnerabilities within the particular IP address or within a particular organization, or you're going to identify the vulnerabilities that are left from the previous exploit. That is if suppose another hacker was there who already exploited some particular organization. So in here, from where did they launch the attack? If suppose that weakness is still not meant, then you're going to again launch the attack from the very same point. The next one is web browsing. Now within web browsing, in here, within web browsing, you are going to browse multiple web pages. Within multiple web pages, if you find any file that is useful, you're going to download that files. Now in here, within this, what you, what, within the web browsing attack, what happens is that there is an infected system has right access to web file. That is the hacker has got the right access means he can make any changes he can manipulate the data so in here he's going to manipulate these files as malicious files he's going to infect virus or worms within this downloaded file now whenever you're going to download this particular file along with this file the virus is also going to be infected to your computer all the users that are going to browse through this particular web pages and download these files they are going to be infected by virus the next is virus. Now in here, each infected machine infects certain common executable or script files. Now in here we have studied, it can be word files, it can be spreadsheets, or it can be databases. This virus attaches itself to these types of files. Now, whenever you open this word file, what is going to happen? The virus that is infected within this particular file, it is going to replicate each time you execute this file. Whereas each time you open the spreadsheet, again, the virus is going to duplicate itself, replicate itself and spread in the computer. Now, when this virus is successful in spreading to a, in your entire computer, this hacker can do any task like this virus can perform the task for which it was created. The next one is unprotected shares. Now within this unprotected shares, now whenever you're sending a particular mail or when you download any files from your email ID, it is going to first scan for virus. The step happens. Now if suppose you are sending files without scanning for virus means if suppose the files that you're attaching, those files contains virus means all the people that are going to share this file or the people are, that are going to download this file, everyone is going to be infected by virus. The next one is mass mail. Now within this mass mail, as the term says mass means it is going to be sent to multiple users multiple persons are going to receive this email. Sending email infections to addresses found in address book. Now, in this type of attack, what happens is that if suppose this virus that is infected within your system, it is going to automatically send emails to all the contacts that are present in your address book with any particular message or it can be a file. Now, all the people that are going to receive this message or download this particular file, they are going to be infected by virus. The next is simple network management protocol. Now within this SNMP, vulnerabilities that is multiple weaknesses are used to compromise and infect the system. Now how you're going to compromise and infect the system is within this, the most widely used is you're going to, now if suppose any file is password protected, password protected files are there. Now in here, every organization, if, uh, every organization has got their own applications to for chatting, messaging, for email servers. So in here, if suppose you've upgraded these versions, 
you've upgraded the version. So in here, what the hacker is going to do, the previous version, the earlier versions that were there for the particular protocol that you're using, the passwords that were used for those protocols, he's going to try and use those same old passwords to crack the new ones. Now to overcome this attack, many times when you try to change passwords for your different for your social media accounts or any accounts, it asks you that you cannot re that you cannot use your previous password. To avoid this, this type of measure is taken so that you do not use the previous passwords. The next one is hoaxes. Now, a more devious approach for attacking computer system is the transmission of virus hoax with a real virus. That is in here, multiple times you get messages that you need, uh, that this is what is happening. You do forward to, uh, to spread awareness, forward this particular message to everyone. Though this can be like in the form of a joke or any news format that it is forcing you to send it to everyone. Now forcing it means he's just telling you to forward it to everyone. You might laugh on the particular joke and you might forward it or you might forward a particular file. Now you do not know that this particular file is a malicious file. So you just forward the file and every people that get access to this particular file that you're sending, every system will get virus. That is why the name hoaxes it disguises itself as something else. The next is backdoors. Now, as we've already discussed, what is backdoor? Within backdoor attack, what happens? If suppose you're, you, within backdoor, what happens? It is going to install some specific component within, within an application so that it provides you with backdoor access into a protected file. Now in here, now within the last class, I gave you an example where if suppose you are late to your home, you sneak in through the backdoor so that no one knows that you were late to your host, to your home. So within this also what happens is that the hacker is going to gain access to the particular secure application via a backdoor. Now as he gets access via this backdoor, he's going to have all the access that were granted to the authorized users. You get all types of access that are given to these authorized users. The next one is password crack. Now within this password crack, it attempts to reverse calculate the password. Now in here, this type of attack is used if suppose a hacker gets access to a copy of security account manager. Security account manager. That is within a particular organization, there is an auth where you need to enter your password to get into the organization. So in here, this particular security account manager, he's going to have a copy of all the passwords. Now, why is there going to be a copy? So that it can match the password that you're entering to the one that is stored within the database. Now, within all these files that are a copy of the passwords, these are hashed files. That is encrypted files. These are hard files. Now, in here, if suppose this person gets access to this hashed files, so if he gets the algorithm that was used to encrypt these hash files, you're just going to reverse them and apply it to this copy file. Then you're going to get the actual passwords. That is why it is called as a reverse calculation of a password. That is a password crack. The next type of attack is the brute force attack. Now within this brute force attack, the application of computing and networking resources to try every possible combination of options and password. That is in here, all the different passwords, you're going to guess the passwords. Now this brute force attack, it becomes easy if you get to know what is, what are the different target systems in which you're going to attack. That is, who is the person that you're going to attack. Now in here, for this particular person, you're going to identify what are his, per, what are his interests. Based upon that, you're going to guess all types of passwords based upon his interest or his date of birth, you're going to identify the password, normal guessing. The next attack is a dictionary attack. Now this dictionary attack, it is a variation of this brute force attack. It is a variation of the brute force attack. In here, it is going to narrow down the field by selecting specific target accounts and 
using a list of commonly used passwords that are present within the dictionary that is dictionary words is going to use the common passwords that are used that are found within the dictionary and then you're going to guess the password the next attack is the denial of service attack also called as the dos attack now within the dos attack what is going to happen is that the attacker is going to send a large number of connections or information requests to a target now in here you've got there is the client and you've got the server now every time a client is going to send a request based upon that request the server is going to response to that request so within this dos attack the the attacker is going to initiate multiple requests to the server at a particular instant of time now as multiple requests are sent to the server side it is going to slow down the server speed that is the server cannot even do the ordinary tasks that were given as a responsibility for the server he cannot even send you back the response for the request that you have initiated now this dos dos attack it is going to happen from one system that is one particular system is used to send these multiple attacks toward the server system the next type of attack a variation of denial of service attack is the distributed denial of service attack now in this attack an attack in which a coordinated stream of request that is multiple requests are sent at a time now but this is launched against a target from many locations at the same time now as multiple look now within the first one denial of service if suppose the server is going to identify from where all these requests are okay now if he gets to know that this particular system is the one attacking then or then the server is going to initiate a counter attack on the system now when he initiates the counter attack on the system it can stop the denial of service of attack it can it can stop whereas within distributed denial of service it becomes impossible to stop this attack now why it becomes impossible because in here there there is not only one system there are going to be multiple systems that are sending this multiple request to one server system so it is very difficult to identify from where these attacks are coming and to counter attack this might crash or simply enable all the server operations that is the server goes down this are the most difficult to defend and let's see a diagrammatic representation of the denial of service attack now in denial of service attack a hacker compromises a system and uses that system to attack the target computer flooding it with more request for services that can handle that is in here within the denial of service what is going to happen this hacker compromises the system that is he is not using his own system he is going to hack another system so that even if the server gets to know what system it is he can, it, that cannot be traced back to the hacker so you are going to use a compromised system and this system is used that is this denial of service he is accessing he is going to send multiple request to this server this is your server and these are the multiple requests that are sent to the user now as multiple numerous amount of requests are sent to the user uh, to the server it becomes very difficult for him to respond to this different request now in uh, let's take an example uh, if suppose the result gets announced multiple requests are given to the usmani university website so and yeah as everyone is initiating the request by sending their roll number to get the result now you're not actually attacking the server but due to the multiple request that are sent to the server at the time it is going to slow down the functions that the server is performing whereas in this distributed denial of service dozens or even hundreds of computers are compromised 
that are loaded with DOS attack software and then remotely activated by a hacker to conduct a coordinate attack. That is all the systems is going to hack all the systems and in here multiple systems are going to send the attacks to that particular server. Whereas one system attacking one server, you're going to have multiple systems attacking one server. The next attack is the spoofing attack, also called as IP spoofing or TCP hijacking attack. TCP hijacking attack. Now within this spoofing attack, this technique is used to gain unauthorized access whereby the intruder sends messages to a computer with the IP address indicating that message is coming from the trusted host. Now whenever you're sending the message, you're message is going to be sent in the form of packets. Now this packet, it contains the header, the IP address and the data. Within this header, you're going to have the IP address and then the data. Now in here, within the spoofing attack, now this IP address, that is for the original user, that is the original website, if it has got some IP address, this within the spoofing attack, you're going to change this IP address. If it has some IP address is used, this IP address is going to be changed. And then this message is going to be sent to the sent to the user that is by changing the IP address he's going to let you believe that the message that you are receiving is from an authenticated source and let's see the diagram in here the original IP packet from the hacker system it is the this is the hackers IP address Now in here, this IP address is changed and that packet is called as your spoofed or modified IP packet. Now this hacker modifies the source address, that is this is the source address, it is not going to, this message you're not going to receive from the source, whereas the message is received from the hacker side. This hacker disguises them, himself as the source and your message is going to travel through firewall. Now within this firewall, the firewall is going to check what are the different set of IP addresses that are allowed through the firewall. The firewall is going to check the packet and he mistakes it for a legitimate traffic and he's going to transfer the packet. Spoof packet slips into the intranet to wreak havoc. You get access within the organization or the server. The next attack is man in the middle attack. Now the name says man in the middle means if suppose two parties are communicating, party A and B is there, there is going to be a person C, that is this person C while, the person C while communicating with A is going to disguise himself as B and when he's communicating with B, he's going to disguise himself as A. And all the information that is transmitted, everything is captured by C. Now in here, C, can manipulate the data and send it to B. Whereas the data that is received from B, he can again manipulate that data and send it back to A. Here A is going to think that he is directly communicating with B and B also thinks that he is directly communicating with C. But there is a hacker that is sitting in between the two people. So as the definition says, the attacker sniffs packet from the network, modifies them, and inserts them back into the network. Let's see a diagrammatic representation for this. Now in here, this is company A, this is your company B. Now company A attempts to establish an encrypted session with company B. Now in here, this man in the middle attack, it can be launched even if your messages are encrypted. That is in here, they're going to use some encryption message that is public keys and private keys are going to be used for encryption and decryption of messages. 
Now A is going to establish the connection with B. But in here, this person, the hacker that is going to sit in between the two, he's going to sniff the packet. That is, he's going to see that the that A wants to establish connection with B, and he's going to disguise himself as B. The company hacker intercepts the transmission and poses as company B. He disguises himself as B, and they exchange their keys for encryption. Then the hacker then establish a session with company B posing as company A. Then in here he is going to disguise himself as company A and he is going to communicate with B. That is in here if suppose some info some files, important dates or anything that is being transmitted or time of meeting anything can be changed by the hacker and it will be sent to B. And then again if suppose a meeting is established or some meeting point established he can modify the dates and disguise himself as the company b person and again he can access all the information that is man in the middle attack the next is spam now the different emails that you get you get different emails within the spam folder now unsolicited commercial email that is to, for promotions or offers different messages that you get those are spam messages the commercial emails while many consider spam as a nuisance rather than an attack because it is considered not as an attack but as a nuisance it is an image emerging vector for some attack that is in here you can there's one type of again the next attack that we're going to study is you're going to bombard the system with multiple spam email messages That is mail bombing. Now, within this mail bombing, this type of attack it is difficult to de uh, to defend against because the attacker gets used. It makes use of multiple bots and it subscribes your email ID to multiple lists that are to different forums, message boards, different newsletters, to all types of mailing list. The victim is being subscribed now when this victim is being subscribed to multiple number of forms messages groups newsletters and mailing list he is going to have multiple messages that is going to bombard his email that is just going to bombard his email account now when he's got a lot of emails if suppose the important email where he had to work it gets somewhere displaced within so many messages now in here now as the attack is launched by these many messages even after the attack is finished or completed these type of messages can still be received at the victim's account the next type of attack is sniffers a program or device that can monitor data now what happens is that what is packet sniffing now in here this packet sniffing it can be used for two reasons one is to monitor the data traveling that is in here you've got the network then there is some company a or some system a and system b now all the packets that are going to be transferred via this network a person is going to check whether all the data that you're transferring and the different packets that are being transmitted through the network whether they are working properly or not that is going to monitor data that is the packets are sending accordingly or not now in here this is one use like this is not the type of attack whereas the second type of attack it is in here sniffers can be used for legitimate network the first reason that i have told you the second one is functions and for stealing information from a network now in here if suppose some type of important information has been traveled from A to B, now in here, packet sniffing means you're going to completely capture this data. You can copy this data or you can completely change this data and again put it back onto the network. So in here, A and B will not know that any type of packet sniffing sniffing has occurred. Now in here, to avoid packet sniffing, you need to use encryption. Now when you use encryption, what happens is that your if suppose you're transferring messages or 
passwords if they are present in plain text it becomes easy for the hacker or the attacker to intercept and use all the messages whereas if you're using in encryption means it can use different symbols numbers or signs to encrypt your message it becomes very difficult for the person for the hacker that is snipping your packets to decrypt the packets the next is social engineering now within social engineering employees are the weakest link within an organization that is you can just talk to them in a friendly way and you can gather or collect information about the organization so the social engineering it is a social skill to convince people to reveal access credentials or other valuable information to the attacker that is you're going to act friendly and act and identify what are the different how you're going to access the particular company's resources or anything you get you gather all this information from the employees that are working within an organization and they are going to send they, they might tell you all the secrets by disguising yourself as a friend the next attack is phishing and the farming attack it is a type of social engineering attack often used to steal users data including the login credentials the credit card numbers all of the things can be captured using the phishing attack it occurs when the attacker masquerading as trusted entity that is this attacker he disguises himself as a trusted person and he is going to let the victim to fill in his details and later use those details for dubious reasons now this phishing attack uses three primary techniques three techniques that are used in the phishing attack are url manipulation the first technique is url manipulation second website forgery and the third one is phone phishing so these are the three types of phishing attacks where you can completely manipulate the url or design a website that is similar to the authenticated version that is designing a bank page to fill in the internet banking details or phone phishing now these three can be used individually or they can be combined to launch an attack whereas the next type of attack it is farming now this farming attack it is type of phishing attack in here the hacker used to steal personal and sensitive information from victims on the internet now in here this can be done by dns cache po poisoning now this dns cache poisoning this is also called as dns spoofing dns cache poisoning is also called as dns spoofing now in this type of attack the attacker is going to is going to attack the different vulnerabilities within the domain name system every website has got its own domain name system now this you're using this domain name system so that you can divert traffic from legitimate servers to fake ones now how this is done that is whenever you're you've got this is the client and you've got the so whenever the client is sending a request to the server now in here this within this the domain name system this attacker either he is going to all the servers has got two types of domain name system they have got primary and the secondary domain name systems now in here whenever a request is being initiated to the server side in here the within the primary file the hacker is either going to go and change the dns of the website to the attacker's address or in here when the server is going to respond this request is going to reach the hacker and the hacker is going to respond first to the client so the page that you are going to receive as answer to your request that is going to be a fake one that is not going to be from the main servers now let's study the difference between phishing and farming phishing is a type of fraud in which attackers trick the victim into providing personal information 
through email or instant messages. This we have studied within fishing. Whereas within the farming, it is going to extract all of this information by domain spoofing. That is, he is going to use either fake internet banking pages or fake Facebook logins, fake email logins. Is going to create a page that is a replica of the original page now if you think that this is the same page you might fill in all the details now in here each and every keystroke that you're entering within this particular page that will be captured and it is it will be used for for gaining unauthorized access this phishing attack it is easy to initiate as well as identify you easily get to know when this attack is being launched and you can identify it. whereas this farming attacks they are very difficult to detect this attack and it is also difficult to launch the attack because in here you need to completely change the domain name system either within the host of the server or you need to respond to the request before the original legitimate server replies now this phishing attack it is a scam to people to people one at a time via an email or instant message that is not they are not going to attack so many people at a time whereas they are going to attack one person at a time Farming allows scammers to target large groups of people at one time through DNS spoof. Now in here within farming, multiple people can suffer through this attack because you're completely changing the domain name system of the original website. So any people, um, multiple persons that are accessing that particular website at that particular instant of time, they are all going to be manipulated. Now this phishing allows fraudulent email containing a link to a website seeking personal details from user. Now, as you've seen that with this phishing attack, you can get messages via email or different messages. Now these emails and messages, they multiple times they have got links. Now, like you might get a message that you've won a lottery for one lakh rupees. You need to just fill in your details by clicking onto the link given below. So when you are directed when you open the link, you're directed to a page where you are going to enter all of your personal information, all of your bank details. Now those bank details, everything is captured by the website and they are going to be used to exploit. Whereas farm within farming, farming poisons a DNS server that is completely changing the domain name system of the server. By infusing false information into servers, that is false information where I told you that the entire DNS at the primary server is being changed in here or redirecting the user to a different website. Now this different website, it is given by the hackers. The next attack is the timing attack. Now this timing attack, it explores the different content of the web browser's cache. Web browser's cache. Now in here, within this web browser cache, now in here, when you visit multiple websites, it is going to ask you that to enable cache or to accept cookies, where all of your information, the pages that you're visiting simultaneously, they'll be stored in the cache so that you get the result more easily and more quickly. So what is this web browser cache and it is going to store malicious form of cookies. Now this cookies are going to be malicious cookies. Now these malicious cookies are stored on the client system. Because all the website cookies are stored at the client system. So in here, this malicious cookies are from the web browser are stored onto the client system. Now these cookies are going to allow the designer to collect information of how to access password protected files. These are used to gain access to all the password protected files. That is if you save your password in plain text somewhere, password protected files, they can get access. And another type of attack is they are, they are also used for interception of cryptographic elements to determine what are the different keys that you're using for encryption because this keys you're 
going to store within your system. So when they get access to your system, they can be used to access files that are password protected and they can also get to know all the cryptographic elements that are the encryption keys, the public keys, private keys, each of them will be identified by this malicious cookies that are used from the web browser's cache. So by this, we have finished the different types of attacks within the system. In the next class, we'll be studying securing the software development. Thank you.